We ain't backing down. Spider two wide banana. The line slides to the left. Watch the young back cut down the defensive end, but there's a beautiful banana. There's three quarterbacks in this football team. Whichever one starts, starts. Whichever one don't, will back them out. Period. Cut and dry. Next. Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. Welcome to the TW Podcast. Uh, today, I am filming this on Friday, uh, which means it'll probably get uh, distributed to you late tonight or on Saturday morning. Uh, but it's episode six. Uh, I decided to kick it a little old school and talk a little bit uh, about myself and my football journey uh, or story. Uh, basically, uh, where my love for the game came all the way up to where I am today. Uh, should be a nice little listen for you guys out there and gals um, as well as you know we'll do our, our normal stuff uh, three and out Netflix movie of the week uh, all that stuff but uh, I kind of ramble on a little bit here so I uh, figure I'll keep the uh, opening here pretty short uh, and get right into it I want to talk about my journey uh, in football uh, it's a game I absolutely love and adore, and at times uh, it can knock you down to your knees and make you very humble, and at times make you feel like you're on top of the world. Uh, and that's the nice thing about this game, it kind of keeps you even keel, because uh, there's going to be highs and lows no matter what it is in life. Uh, but I kind of want to let everybody who's out there listening kind of hear uh, my story of football. Um, you know, if I was to get into uh, way back, I would say I got into football at a very young age. Uh, I was never a very athletic uh, soul as a young kid. I was, I was a chubby kid, not much has changed, but uh, got into football uh, somewhere probably in second or third grade in that background, in that backyard football stuff. Um, I was a big Green Bay Packers fan. Brett Favre was my favorite player growing up. Uh, things changed when they lose the Super Bowl in 97, uh, or what was it, 96, one of the two, wherever they lost to uh, John Elway. Uh, that's where my, my my Packers career ended, uh, and I ended up picking the next uh, green team on my bed spread I had at home, which was the New York Jets. Uh, kind of a little funny backstory for you, but that's kind of where I always remember my love for football starting. Uh, you know, my grandfathers, both of them, uh, were very big into the Packers. Loved to watch football games. Uh, wasn't something that we watched around my house all the time as a kid, but when I got to see my grandparents, I watched a lot of football. Um, and that's where it really started. Uh, once I got to middle school, we started having 7th and 8th grade football. Uh, I was a two-time blue teamer. Uh, whoever knows Gary Salo out there, he was the blue team coach. Go Coach Salo. Um, but, uh, you know, it, that's where uh, the physicality really started to set in uh, and really that true uh, grind for it. Now, uh, I'm, I was not athletically gifted. I was not uh, great as a 7th and 8th grade football player, played a lot of different positions, uh, but uh, by the time I got to high school, I was a freshman, and uh, in my freshman year, um, to say, you know, I was probably 5'6", 5'5", 210 pound kid, uh, not ideal for anybody's, uh, what, you're, what you're looking for, uh, but I wanted to be an offensive lineman. Uh, like to my heart and soul, I wanted to be a center. I could not beat out the number one center. Uh, his name was Steve Herman. He was starting center first for four years. Every year that I was there, go Steve. Uh, but that's where kind of I took a, a different turn. Um, you know, I, I always had a work ethic about me, and I was not. Uh, I was raised never to quit anything I ever done in my life, uh, and that's where uh, you know I showed up to practice every single day. And I worked my ass off. Like, it didn't matter uh, the 40 time I'd run, the bench press reps I could do, it didn't matter. Uh, I was going to give it everything I had. Uh, and I had a coach. Uh, his coach was, my coach's name was uh, Craig Ness. Uh, and I still talk to him today. He's a very good friend of mine. Uh, but he was the first one to uh, show, uh, I don't want to say like the love, like, He's the first one who believed in me 
and believed I could do something that I wasn't even believing myself. And he basically told me, he's like, man, you work so hard. You come to every single practice. You never gripe. Um, you know, if you and he was the defensive coordinator, and he said, you know, if you keep up this entire week, I'll start you on uh, Friday. So that's kind of where I got, you know, that first belief in you. And when you get that first belief, it is, it is something that fuels you and makes you feel good. Uh, and everything from there really kind of just, woo, was a whirlwind. I just lived, breathed football 24-7. Uh, by the next year, when I became a JV football player, uh, I grew. I got to five foot eight, about 250 pounds. I, I hit the weight room quite a bit. Uh, during that time, I got pretty strong uh, for being a 15, 16 year old kid. Uh, was very, uh, put in a lot of work and I was seeing the results and it was very uh, exciting. Uh, going into that year was a, uh, you know, I was, I was a good football player at that point. Not a great football player. I'll never sit here and tell you about how great I was, but you know, I was, uh, I was putting the fundamentals together and I was I was becoming a player um, you know and I got uh, I got injured I got injured uh, quite early right before uh, we ended camp I ended up getting my knee rolled up into um, won't get any names about that um, but uh, got my knee rolled up into in practice uh, uh, you know my MCL was pretty loose uh, it still remains that way to this day uh, but I had to take two weeks off and get it ready. So I missed the first two games of uh, my JV year. Uh, after that, as uh, soon as uh, I was ready to go, kind of got right back into it, uh, right there on the defensive line. Uh, was very, uh, very fun. You know, that's where uh, that breeding ground of just the love of the game is in its purest, uh, especially that JV year for me, just just unbelievable. Um, then you gotta get into varsity. You know, and when I got to the varsity level, I was uh, I was a kind of a reserve player as a junior. Uh, you know, some people, uh, you know, somewhat maybe I didn't keep up. I may I got a little too uh, confident in what I was already. Uh, didn't you know? I still hit the weight room very hard. I'd never say that I never hit the weight room. But maybe my attitude wasn't as good as it should have been going into that year. Um, you know, there's two seniors that played ahead of me. Um, you know, and both of them were good football players. I'll never say anything bad about those two guys. But, uh, you know, I was a reserve player. I played, uh, I wouldn't say sparingly, but I played uh, in quite a few games, made some good plays, did some things. Um, but it wasn't my favorite year of football. That was probably one of the first uh, times in my football career where uh, I had to learn that what I what just happened was not good enough uh, and I didn't enjoy any aspect uh, much of that junior year uh, you know I was still a good teammate I had never uh, wavered in being a good teammate you know made sure uh, I did everything but um, you know going into that summer my junior year I made it a pivotal uh, moment in my life uh, at football at that time to say that that would never happen to me again. Uh, so uh, going into that summer, I I trained every single day. I worked at a grocery store every single day. Um, you know, I was I was a busy kid with a busy schedule when it came to August. Uh, you know, in July and everything like that. I just I just grinded. And my whole objective was to grind until I was the best uh, that I could be. Um, you know, got very strong, lost some weight, um, got faster somehow. You know, I still don't think I was very fast, uh, but I got faster. Uh, and, you know, I ended up having a pretty good senior year uh, at Escanaba. Uh, I don't know if I had mentioned that right away, but I went to Escanaba High School. Um, my head coach, uh, his name was Dan Flynn. Uh, I thought he was a very uh, great head coach, very guy who's very open and honest with you. Um, but, you know, senior year was very good. Um, we did very good as a team. Um, you know, we went to a playoff game 
Uh, we won our first one against Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, it was a very controversial game. The, uh, the Blue Devils of Sault Ste. Marie might still talk about that game, saying that we uh, were out on the touchdown. Uh, but, you know, we got it. We went to the second round. We played a school called Cadillac, uh, who was pretty stacked at the time, and um, they ended up beating us 28 to nothing. And it was a very bitter sorrow moment uh, to the end of a uh, high school football career, but um, you know it was it was just really really tough, really tough. Uh, that's when you see uh, young men cry unobtainably uh, for a long period of time. So, and I was included. You know, I would not exclude myself. I was. It took me a long time to even get my uniform off. Um, but that kind of wraps up. Uh, you know, kind of my high school career, you know, after that I, I wanted to play college football. I did not want to stop playing football. I didn't want to stop being around football. Absolutely did not want that to happen. Uh, and as in life, things are, they don't always work out uh, for the best uh, or what you want. Like nothing ever works out the way you envision it all the time. Um, thought I was going to a school. Um, it turns out um, in the application process, I did not get accepted to the school that uh, I basically committed to. Um, basically, I did not have enough math credits in high school in which I believe it, if I could pick the schedule, I was not putting math on the old docket. So, um, you know, that's kind of where I had another, po you know, another point in my uh, football, you know, life where I got that wrench thrown at me and I was like, this is so uh, depressing and sad. Um, but, you know, one of my coaches at that time, his name is Dave Wilson, great friend of mine till to this day. Um, you know, you know, he had to be the one to tell me that I wasn't going to be able to get in the school I wanted to. And it, it upset us really both. But the biggest thing for me is, you know, uh, originally it started off, I needed to go take a couple credits at a community college and then I could transfer in right away and start playing college football. Uh, during that time, I basically enrolled at Bay Knock Community College in my hometown of Escanaba. Um, while I was there, um, you know, is where I started my coaching career. Uh, I remember before I even graduated high school, I walked up to Coach Flynn. I said, Coach Flynn, I'm going to be here next fall. I'm going to be uh, a line coach for the freshman football team, and uh, I'll see you this summer. We'll have more conversations about it. And, and I think he laughed a little bit, thinking that, you know, maybe I was uh, joking with him. Uh, but I remember going over his house uh, rather regularly to talk to him about uh, being a coach. And I remember the first night <clears throat> before the first practice of the excitement that I had and the, um, all the same emotions I had as a player every single thing about it uh the excitement the i can't sleep like i'm too excited you know it's just just something that you don't know unless you play this sport and understand i'm sure it's like that for people in other sports as well but i mean that is where uh you know i really got that itch i remember just sitting there the entire night scratching down on a notepad what i was going to do in my individual period what the warm-up should look like i took a lot of notes and what i remember um, to make sure that I was going to be prepared uh, to be a coach for these uh, freshmen. Um, it was, uh, I always kind of find it kind of funny at that time when I was making all those notes the day before camp, I watched the movie Die Hard on TV, uh, which has turned into kind of a little tradition for me. Every, uh, every, every year that we get ready to start camp, the day before camp, I watch Die Hard. Uh, just kind of a little tradition I started ever since that point because um, it stuck with me. Uh, but I uh, became a freshman football coach. Uh, you know, this was my crash course into coaching. And I got uh, the two guys that I worked with. The head coach was, uh, he was my freshman head coach uh, when I was there, um, as well as the line coach there that I worked with. Uh, was my line coach when I was at that level too. Uh, so, you know, I was kind of excited to work with those guys. Uh, they were older gentlemen, um, you know, and at some points in that, uh, 
in that first year, um, you know, I saw a lot of negativity in coaching. I saw a lot of uh, anger at players and uh, calling players out and uh, tell them they're not good enough and stuff like that. And I was really kind of disenchanted for a little bit because I was like, this is not what I want. I remember at the end of that first year when I sat down with Coach Flynn for my end of the year uh, exit interview, he was like, um, you know, how did the first year go? I said, you know, I love coaching. I didn't love being around the negativity that uh, some people brought to the staff uh, at that level and made it very difficult. You know, nobody wanted to listen to him, which, you know, I was a greenhorn, man. Like, it's your first year coaching. Who wants to listen to a young guy? But, um, you know, I think that first year uh, I was kind of taken for granted and, uh, you know, didn't enjoy that fully. And I remember telling Coach Flynn, I said, I'm not, you know, I want to keep coaching, but I do not want to coach on that level with these two individuals anymore because the negativity is too much for me. Um, and at that point, uh, he goes, okay, uh, we'll talk more about it later. Uh, not too much later, I found out that I would be uh, coaching on the JV level. Uh, at that time, I also, uh, I'm not going to say I became the strength coach for uh, football teams, but uh, I got kind of put in charge of uh, you know, the weight training aspect of that JV team uh, for the summer as well as I was going to open up the weight room, which got me a little extra money in my pocket, uh, which I was very excited about, um, you know, because everything for me has been volunteer uh, to that point. Um, you know, and JV, uh, that JV season, I got more, uh, you know, I got to reunite myself with Coach Ness, uh, and I got to work with uh, Coach Duvall, who I hold in a high regard, like that guy, uh, is very passionate and can get a lot out of his players. I love playing for him and um, coaching with him was great. Sometimes, you know, he'd get after you, but I appreciate that. Um, working with those two guys uh, was was phenomenal. Uh, also worked with Scott Sheepak, who was a great human being. It was his first year in coaching, so uh, it was nice that we kind of got to bounce uh, ideas off each other and things that. Uh, we're going, you know, but I got a lot of responsibility during that year. Um, and that's where, uh, when I started getting responsibility and, you know, people got to count on you, that is when uh, things really uh, started to amp up for me. And I got really excited. Um, and that is, uh, you know, that JV year, we were a pretty successful JV team. Lost a, lost a handful, maybe two games. Um, but, uh you know that's the way the cookie crumbles. Uh, kind of going into that next uh, that next year, you know, I'm going to community college at the same time. Um, I wasn't getting paid for coaching. Um, there was a position available uh, for the varsity of a position coach that would be paid, kind of a paid deal. Um, applied for it, interviewed for it, did not get it. Um, you know, and those are things in life that uh, they hurt. You know, you spent two years there coaching for somebody, you don't get a position uh, that you worked pretty hard for. Um, so, you know, that was another uh, the old notch in the old uh, the old belt of hurt in football. There's so much good and then bad. You know, it just happens all the time. Um, so, you know, that happens, and, you know, I'm very uh, – I, I became a little bitter about it, but uh, at that time they told me, they said, Travis, you're going to move up. You're going to be on the varsity. You're going to be the D-line coach on the varsity, um, and these are going to be X, Y, and Z, your expectations at that time, you know, still doing the strength conditioning stuff in the summer, opening the gym, doing those kind of things, working, running workouts, running plyometrics, uh, getting these kids to move a little bit in the summer. Um, did a lot of that. Um, you know, we ended up being a pretty successful football team during that uh, run. We had a very uh, good team. It was kind of unique because I got the same class three years in a row in uh, coaching, and this was the first year I kind of got uh, uh, the kids that were freshmen when I was a senior in high school were on the team, so I got to, I got to really uh, coach somebody different a little bit, and uh, we were a very successful football team. We had a very good team. 
Uh, the seniors on that team were very uh, dominant, as well as we had some very good junior class there. Uh, we ended up going to uh, the second round of the playoffs again, went to Cadillac in the first round. Uh, it was kind of my redemption tour on Cadillac, and we ended up beating them in an overtime, double overtime game um, on a very sloppy field. Uh, the following week went down to Ogilma Heights uh, and played a very good uh, Falcon football team that year. Um, and they ended up beating us. Another uh, kind of second round, didn't get past it. Uh, bitter taste, but, um, you know, at the end of that year, I got, there was a deal, I, I kind of should rewind it a little bit. Uh, Coach Flynn, who was, um, you know, since I did not get that paid position through the school, uh, he felt uh, that I earned a, a spot as a coach and should be paid. Um, and he decided that he would pay me out of his own pocket, um, but he was not going to pay me uh, just cash for me to uh, walk around with and do stuff with. Uh, his thing was for that semester, he was going to pay my tuition at uh, Baytonac Community College, uh, which he did. He signed uh, a check in his name uh, for me to go pay my education. Um, that year was great. You know, I kind of, it was going to be my final year there. You know, part of taking that money and part of me being on the varsity team, there was a deal struck that if I did this, that I would have to uh, go to a four-year institution and get my college degree. That was utmost important to him that I get my college degree, and I couldn't agree with that more. Um, not, you know, looking back at the time, I was probably like, I don't want to go, or yeah, I should probably go finish. You know, I wasn't thinking uh, too far ahead, and not most uh, 19, 20 year old kids think that how far ahead. Uh, so, uh, had that opportunity. Um, you know, and he paid for my education, and I, till this day, I always say thank you for it. Uh, meant a lot. Uh, it was probably better than just paying me money, because coaching to me at that point in time was not, uh, it was my favorite thing to do, but it wasn't uh, what I was making money for. You know, that was not what it was. Um, at that time, I had to make a decision where I wanted to go to school. Uh, and I had a few different options. Uh, I could go to uh, Northern Michigan, where I kind of knew people already, and where I could have went to Central Michigan, where I knew one person. Uh, but I knew that uh, after visiting both places, and I visited Michigan State during that time, uh, I knew Central Michigan was the best fit for me uh, uh, at that time. Uh, looking at the campus structure, not everything was super far apart. Uh, it was bigger than what I was used to. It was going to be something different, something different I never experienced before. I'd have to move away from home, you know, considerably far. In my mind at that time, it was considerably far, you know. It was probably about four hours. And, uh, you know, I made the big trip. Uh, was supposed to go there. I was going to be a high school coach at first uh, at Mount Pleasant High because we had a guy who's done it before, it was a school, I uh, was a coach, went to school down there. Uh, helped out the football team, thought that's what I was going to do as well. Uh, got an opportunity uh, to work in, uh, as a student manager, equipment manager, uh, for the football team at Central Michigan. Uh, you know, at that time, uh, I didn't know fully what I was going to get myself into. Uh, you know, being a student manager, I found out soon, is not... Uh, not a highly respectable position in a football program all the time, uh, but the you know players always appreciate you. The coaches sometimes are going to get after you uh, and get mad at you and do those kind of things. And you know sometimes you got to do some almost you know kind of uh, degrading work in your mind, but uh, you got to keep the team in mind. So uh, that whole year, I decided I was going to use that as you know I still planned at that point I was going to be a high school football coach and I was going to. Uh, get my degree in sport management. I was just going to figure it out. I was going to be a high school coach at some point, and that's what I want to do. Um, so uh, it, you're there. I'm there. You know, it's uh, I'm working hard, uh, and I think that's and uh, the biggest thing that makes people stick out is their work ethic. 
Um, I worked for the one guy when I got to Central Michigan as a student manager. I remember getting there. They're like, oh, what position you want to work with? And I was like, oh, you know, I coach D-line, blah, blah. They're like, oh, we already got a D-line student manager. You're going to work with the O-line. <laughs> that time there wasn't a student manager in there because they were most of them already were there in the spring and met the new O-line coach. His name is Mike Cummings. Uh, and they weren't uh, too keen on working for this guy. And I think they were kind of intimidated by him. Now, Coach Cummings is an intimidating person. Um, but he does it with uh, the caring attitude. Uh, he wants to get you better. And that's uh, a great trait to have. Uh, so I walked in there as a student manager. I was his student manager. And that guy tried to stump me every single day. Every single day tried to stump me on something. Um, and every time, you know, if he gave me a task to go do and ask for something, and we, he, he might have known damn well that we did not have that, he was going to test me to see if I would figure something out. And I'd always come back with something and be like, well, we could use this, and this could be a good deal. And then he would just, yeah, it's not a bad deal. Let's do that. Um, at some point he found out I was, you know, in a conversation. I told him I was a high school football coach for the last three years. And he invited me to come to uh, his position meetings and start learning. And I don't lie to anybody. When I, was, when I came to Central Michigan, I knew absolutely zero about offensive line play. I got in there. Uh, and I got to work with Coach Cummings, and that is where my eyes were open. This I started learning things about a position I never knew. I started learning that there is more intricacies into playing that position. It is a very difficult position on a fundamental standpoint, as well as a knowledge standpoint of understanding what you got to get done. So, you know, I was learning a lot. I mean, I sat in the back of those meetings, intimidated, scared to even say a word, but I was taking note after note after note. I was just trying to learn. Um, and it didn't uh, dawn on me till Coach Cummings would start calling on me in a meeting to see if I'm retaining knowledge, to see if I'm learning, um, in which sometimes I would answer incorrectly or sometimes I would answer correctly. And he would keep me on my toes to make sure that I was, if I was in there, I was going to be learning. I was not just sitting there to hang out. So, uh, you know, I was always consistently taking notes. He would offer... You know, if you ever got, uh, you ever want to talk about offensive line, just come on by and we'll talk about offensive line. And, um, you know, took advantage of that quite a few times uh, to talk about it. And every time I'd go in there, I'd be uh, nervous as all get out. So, uh, but he would always, you know, answer questions. And he would ask me questions of how I would think things would have to go. Um, and it was very, you know, when you look back at it, it is a great education uh, for what I'm doing now. Like, this is, uh, you know, kind of that deal. And in one of those sessions, he, he sat there and he was like, you know, is this something you're looking to do, is be a college coach? And at that point, I was like, no, nah, I never even thought about it. He goes, well, you know, this could be an opportunity, you know, for you um, to kind of, you know, just get your feet wet and start learning some things. Because I still had about another year to graduate at that point. Um, so I had to get an internship for my sport management degree. I convinced the, um, the person who ran the uh, internship that uh, I would work for the football team and it would be my internship, which I had to work for uh, in the reality of things. I was working for Plaz Presnell, but my things I was doing for Plaz was very small because he already had a... Uh, intern who was his son so uh, most of my duties lied into the uh, GA, the GA office uh, and working on that kind of stuff and being a student assistant and working uh, with the offensive line and uh, basically a more expanded view of uh, college coaching so did that all throughout 2012 graduated that spring um, after graduating, I went and applied uh, for some small uh, D3 jobs that possibly I could get, uh, at least in my mind. I remember I interviewed at Elma College uh, for a job that was going to pay me $8,000, maybe $10,000, uh, to coach their offensive line full-time. Uh, I was still planning on getting my master's and going to Central Michigan. could do that while still doing uh, this. So I applied for the job. Uh, had a little great conversations with their offense coordinator at the time. Uh, he's a great friend of mine now. Um, 
but it didn't work out. Head coach didn't think I had enough, uh, you know, experience in recruiting. Um, and it was another one of those down points, you know, just kind of worked my way up there and then thought I could get myself a job to get, you know, that first job and it didn't work out. And it was very, uh, you know, back to that sad moments in football where it's like, well, I thought I was going to get a career in this. Now it might not even work out. Uh, and that's when Coach Enos, Coach uh, Dan Enos was the uh, head football coach at Central Michigan at the time. Um, and I recently did not get this job, and I think everybody on staff knew I applied for it and I interviewed for it. Uh, when I didn't get it, kind of uh, people started, you know, talking about it a little bit. And um, at that time, he brought me into his office, and he's like, I know you didn't get that job, but I want to offer you a job. Uh, I want to make you a quality control coach here. Um, you know, we like you here. We think you do a, a hell of a job, and we want to keep you around. So uh, I took that job and was very excited, too, because I knew I was going to start getting my master's, and I was going to go to school there. And at the same time, I could help the football team in this quality control role. Um, and we had some exciting times, you know. Uh, really, when you're a quality control coach, you're a graduate assistant. Just your kind of roles are a little bit different from one another. They're not very different. There's just a few uh, odds and ends that are a little bit different. Uh, you know, and so, you know, I basically was working with the same group of guys I worked for the year before, just had a little bit more responsibility and uh, had to get after it. So basically the difference between quality control, uh, at least from where we were at that time, most of us were all uh, – 22 to 25, 26 year old guys, uh, younger guys who weren't going to get paid very much to do our work. But uh, basically, if you were the GA, you're going to get your uh, tuition paid for, which is basically being on scholarship to be a football coach. Um, and then the quality control, we we're going to get a you know stipend money, and that was it. So uh, you know, I started paying for my own uh, graduate school at that time. Uh, Going to class and being a football coach at the same time uh, is very difficult. And it is not, you know, you go, you work all day, you go to class at 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock at night. When you get done, you still got to go back to the office and finish up work, and then you go home. And then you wake up at 4 445, 5 o'clock, be in the office by 515, 530, and start your day over all over again. And, you know, it's kind of like Groundhog's Day all year round. And um, and I, the number one thing that you learn in being a GA or quality control or anything like that is if you don't have the passion, the drive, or the ability to grind, it's not going to work out. So, you know, that's the biggest uh, tell point in that. If you can't handle that job, though, some of those guys, every guy that I worked with there lasted quite a long time because we understood uh, what was at stake and what we had to do and everything like that, but uh, you know it becomes difficult. It's uh, it's not an easy job. So uh, did that for about a year and a half. Um, one of the GAs left, took a new job. Uh, there's a GA ship open, and I said like right away. I remember, you know, I remember a GA left before, and I thought I was just kind of going to be the next GA. And then a GA came in and took that job. So I knew at that point that I needed to go establish that I wanted to be a GA. And I remember going to Coach Enos' office and saying, Coach, uh, I know there's no graduate assistant job. And I just want to tell you that I really would enjoy being the graduate assistant here. Um, I can't remember if it was instant, oh, yeah, you got it, or it was a few days later, hey, yeah, Trav, you're going to be the GA. Uh, but I got the GA ship. So now I'm getting my school paid for, so now I'm a little bit more excited about that. Um, so go throughout that. Um, you know, it's uh, it's such a – it was something I really wanted at that, that time. So it's um, – you know, I was very gracious for Coach to give me that position. Um, and at that time we had a new old line coach. His name was Butch Berry. Uh, and I learned a lot from Coach Berry. Uh, he's a phenomenal coach. You can look at everywhere he's been. He's currently with the Green Bay Packers, but um, you know he was on staff the entire time I was there. He was the tight ends coach, and then Coach Cummings left to take a new job, and uh, Coach Barry became the uh, offensive line coach. So I got to be his GA, and 
uh, learned an awful lot from him uh, in that uh, amount of time, in which ended up not being uh, an extended long period of time uh, working together. But uh, he taught me a lot about offensive line play, taught me a lot about recruiting, taught me a lot about uh, stuff you need to get done. And he is one of the coaches that I met him and Coach Cummings, they're consistent grinders. I never see these guys stop talking football. I bumped into the convention this year. Uh, I'm walking up, and you know I figure they might just be talking about life, and they're talking about um, uh, what the center's doing uh, on a slam call or whatever uh, jargon they were talking about at that time. Uh, but those guys are just consistent grinders. They're not going to stop talking ball, and that's why I enjoy being around those two all the time because you learn a lot because they learn – uh, you know, when you don't see them, they're still learning. They're not, uh, they don't think they always have all the answers, but they're going to be a consistent learner. So every time you get together, you can have a conversation about uh, getting better. Um, so, um, you know, after uh, that year was pretty a pretty fun year. You know, earlier on, in 2012, I was a student assistant. We won uh, the Little Caesars Pizza Bowl. Uh, this year, uh, we, I think we went 7-5. and five. Um, was our best uh, best uh, uh, year at that point in uh, at Central. Uh, we got our bowl bid, uh, and this was the first year they introduced the uh, Bahamas Bowl, and at that time it was called the Popeyes Bahamas Bowl, uh, and we were going to go to the Bahamas. Um, you know, so we're we're sitting there in bowl practices, and uh, all of a sudden I start hearing about. Uh, Finlandia, which I had heard about since I grew up in the UP, um, but they were going to start football, and they just announced their head coach, uh, and I knew right away that this would be an opportunity for me to get my first full-time job uh, in college coaching. Um, did not know the head coach. Um, uh, the guys that I worked with at Central Michigan knew them and have uh, some of them worked with them. Uh, coach Barry worked with them at Michigan Tech. Uh, the head coach's name was Tim Driscoll. Um, so, uh, you know, this might be something for people listening out there, kind of a uh, background how I got the first job. But uh, instead of just being one of those guys who's going to email a guy and start talking about, hey, here's my resume and uh, this, that, and the other, uh, you know, hopefully you consider me for your staff. Uh, I decided to go a different route. Uh, email them, start talking to them basically congratulate him getting the head coaching job at Finlandia. Um, talked about in the email about uh, people that we knew and uh, that we would be, uh, Sai was speaking at a clinic in Escanaba that I went to every single year and uh, just so happens that Coach Barry was going to be speaking at that year. So uh, I said I'm going to be there. I look forward to meeting you uh, and just having a conversation. So you know, and he emailed me right back and said, hey, man, look forward to meeting you. Um, so that uh, that happened in about November. It was, we were, we still had um, bull stuff kind of going on um, and everything like that. Um, so uh, did that, met him, had a great conversation. Um, and that kind of sprouted the, his notion of uh, who I was and what I was about. Because literally a few weeks later, uh, he posted positions, uh, was looking for an offensive line coach. Um, and while I was in bowl practice one day, Coach Perry said, hey, I talked to Coach Driscoll. He says, you really need to apply for his job. So I applied for the job, um, interviewed for the job. Um, and probably uh, at that point, I think I interviewed after the bowl game. I can't remember. All I know is uh, it was December, and it was towards the end of the uh, year. Uh, I interviewed, got uh, got the call of the offer for the job, and I instantly uh, accepted on the spot, did not say no. And I remember uh, having to go to Coach Enos at that time and say, hey, uh, I want to be – I just took a full-time job. It's going to be at a D3 school in the UP. He said it's probably a great start for you. That's where you're from. You know, there's going to be a lot of headaches there starting a football program, uh, but wish you nothing but the best. So uh, went there, um, you know, and was the offensive line coach to start here. I could go, uh, you know, 
tell you a lot of stories about year one, but, um, you know, first year, won three football games. Uh, I was just the offensive line coach. Next year, um, started gaining a little bit more responsibility, um, was a recruiting coordinator. Uh, the following year, uh, we had some staff changes. I became the assistant head coach, um, as well as still the recruiting coordinator, video coordinator. I held every single coordinator position uh, known to humankind here at Finlandia uh, to really kind of uh, hone in on all the skills you learn as a GA. You, you know a lot of different things. Um, and then uh, in 2018, uh, there was a leadership change. Um, the university approached me to, uh, for me to be an interim head football coach. Um, of course, you know, as I said at that time, I was like, of course I'm going to do it. Um, this is something I fully believe in, starting this D3 football program in my backyard here. You know, I believe this can be something that's great. So uh, took the job, uh, you know, and uh, when you become a head coach, you know, it's something you always dream about. And I was 29 years old. You know, I'm only 31 now. It's only been two years since then. But um, you're not always understand what being the head coach means and, uh, the difficulties and challenges that instantly become on your plate. Um, and I could go on for hours about uh, that transition. Uh, but that kind of, you know, brings you up to where we are today. Um, you know, where, you know, how I kind of came about into this spot. I mean, I could tell you guys more stories uh, and everything else, but I just kind of wanted to give you guys the background of how I got to where I am today, uh, kind of who I am. Um, and it gives you a little bit of backstory. So, uh, well, that was kind of my journey so far. It will keep uh, unraveling and unfolding as it goes. All right, let's start wrapping up the podcast. Uh, I'm sure you guys are uh, probably tired of listening to me talk about myself, so let's get into some other stuff, all right? Let's get to the Netflix movie of the week. Uh, today's pick, I chose The Patriot. Uh, this is a movie about the Revolutionary War, uh, basically uh, Great Britain versus America. Uh, with Mel Gibson in the starring role, uh, Heath Ledger's in it as well. Uh, I haven't watched it in a few years, uh, but it's on the docket uh, to watch it. So uh, I figured I'd throw it out there because I remember it being a phenomenal movie. Uh, violent, as tend to uh, uh, my picks of the week end up being. I'm a little bit of the action uh, guy, so uh, very excited to watch it. Uh, very good. Uh, so get out there and watch it, all right? Uh, but let's get to three and out, all right? First down. All right, so I started watching Watchmen on HBO, all right? I'm probably to like episode four-ish, um, and I started the other night, kind of late. Uh, didn't know uh, exactly how I was going to feel about it. I remember the original Watchmen movie, which I really liked, so I figured this could be right up my alley. Uh, it is vastly different than the movie and is not based off the comic, so uh, it's kind of its new entity, but uses uh, things from the comic, and it's it's a really good story so far. Uh, it's kind of got me on the edge of my seat every week. Uh, they do a lot of like flashbacks, uh, a lot of introducing people that you don't fully understand or know or why they're there, uh, and they start to slowly peel it back and show you things. Uh, but so far I am hooked uh, if you want to watch it, it's on HBO uh, so get after it alright uh, second down alright sounds like COVID-19 starting to wrap up a little bit around the country I uh, see some states are starting to open pretty slowly state of Michigan is still not to that point uh, as well as a few other states I know California is not uh, as well as um, Illinois and New York um, it's kind of a slow open for us, uh, but it's nice to see that it's starting to happen. Because uh, I'll be honest, I'm tired of Zoom meetings. I'm tired of no contact. Uh, I'm tired of uh, not seeing your friends and having conversations. Uh, so I'm kind of ready for the pandemic to be over, uh, get back to some normalcy, uh, and get just be excited to be back out in the world. All right, all right, here we go. Third down. Madden League, all right, starting to close up another season here. Uh, I went and replicated the exact same thing I did the year before. I went 13-3, and three, and I lost in my divisional round. Um, 
I played the Titans. Um, in the group chat, as the Titans pointed out to me, that after I played the Steelers in regular season, I said, see in the AFC Championship game, and he was going to be the spoiler. Um, got me, and you're right. I, that was uh, a little bit foresight for me. I should have I should have thought better. He has Lamar Jackson. He does a lot of read option and throws some things, and uh, it's something we don't see all the time on that game. So I uh, struggled a little bit, uh, did some bonehead plays, didn't score on the goal line on a fourth and one. Uh, it totally kills you. So uh, Madden League, though, uh, the Packers will be playing uh, the Steelers in the Super Bowl, which will be the second time the Steelers are showing themselves. Last year, the Steelers made a hell of a game. Well, you can't really say last year. It was like probably three weeks ago. Uh, the Steelers made uh, a heck of a run, man, uh, and made it an interesting game. It looked like it was getting out of hand, and he came back and had to go to overtime, uh, and he still lost. But I know uh, I know he's looking for a victory this year. Packers are a good team. Uh, he's got Aaron Rodgers at the helm still in the fantasy draft. He drafted Aaron Rodgers. He's tossed around the rock. Uh, should be an interesting game. So uh, good luck to Kyle and David this uh, week. I'm looking forward to watching on Twitch. Um, but that's the podcast for today. Uh, appreciate everybody tuning in. Um, you guys all have a great day.